Heads up. Well, a few of you may have noticed we were missing off of YouTube for about a month. I'm going to tell you all about it, but first, let's watch this. This is a wild thing. We actually haven't seen this before. But basically what happened was somebody did some copyright strikes against Iron Mouse's VOD channel and also her main channel on YouTube. They did DMCAs. The problem with this is in order to refute a copyright strike, you have to give your personally identifiable information, your, your PII. This includes your name, address, phone number, so on and so forth. This is part of the DMCA process. It's not a YouTube demand. This is a part of DMCA demand. This person was doing this to try and dox Iron Mouse. That's the reason they were doing it. So Iron Mouse couldn't send the information, which means she got all the strikes, channel got taken down. Horrible, horrible behavior. YouTube got enough pressure from the public that they said, hey, this is bullshit, and they brought the VOD channel and the main channel back up. So I'm really glad that that happened, but it shows you if Iron Mouse did not have the large community that she does, this would have been very different. And I think this is a very clear pathway for abuse on a platform like YouTube, and it needs to be resolved in some way. Because this could be used against smaller creators that don't have that kind of a platform, and there's nothing anyone would be able to do safe. And I think that's not great. I think that's a really big problem. Thor, this happened to me too, just this month. I can relate to Iron Mouse here because this is exactly what's happened to me, and Thor explains it perfectly. We all remember these comments from a previous video, and if not, go watch it. On September 11th, hard to believe it wasn't timed on that date symbolically for a reason, I received an email that my YouTube channel had been terminated due to multiple DMCA or copyright strikes. Like Thor says, when you go to file the appeal, you have to give your personal information. Users with malicious intent do this to acquire your address, phone number, name, etc. This is exactly what was done to me by these three individuals. In an effort to avoid further harassment and torturous interference, I hired an attorney to assist me with these issues. The letter from my attorney explains it best. It states, By selectively answering the web forms provided by YouTube, the claimants were able to bypass human review. Coordinating with several other users, this tactic was used to trigger an automatic termination of the Hair Sandwich TV channel by forcing three strikes before the owner of Hair Sandwich TV was able to submit counter notification. This is an abuse of the automated takedown system and constitutes misuse. Specifically, it is a false claim because no copyrights were infringed upon. The copyright notifications instituted by the three claimants are part of a broader pattern of harassment of Hair Sandwich TV and its owner. Specifically, the claimants have displayed malicious intent in a attempting to acquire my client's personal contact information, as the counter notification process would require my clients to submit their personal contact information. My clients have received threats from these claimants and their associates to destroy their businesses and cause physical harm. Claimants, copyright notifications are nothing more than an attempt to garnish more information so they can act on these threats. And that's the gist of it. On October 8th, we got our YouTube channel back, further reinforcing the fact that the claims were fraudulent took almost an entire month. Most creators do not have the time or the financial means to defend themselves like I do. My attorney has a retainer paid halfway to six figures. So this can be a real problem for you as an up and coming streamer if you are not prepared. Now how do we prevent this? First things first, if you're serious about this, you need to find a credible attorney. But like Thor says, use an LLC. Can't you just use an LLC? Not everybody has those set up for that reason, right? Not a lot of people realize you've got to set up like a shell company to deal with that shit. And I think that's important to understand. Using an LLC will give you a layer of privacy that I highly recommend. It will still be possible to get your personal information if your LLC is not set up correctly. But there are address services and managing member services that will hide any and all of your details from the attackers. This does cost money though, and again, most starting streamers do not have the financial means to do this. I strongly suggest you do not stream without an attorney or financial entity established. Then, everything linked to your stream should be owned and operated by that established business. Website, PayPal, shipping address, etc. all should be pointing towards the business and not your person. This has kept my personal information private very well in my recent experiences with attackers of the same nature. And I already know your next question. What happens to users who do this type of abuse? How do they get away with it? Well, referencing our favorite YouTube channel again. I think DMCA takedowns need to be prosecuted as fraud. They're supposed to be able to be. That's illegal. I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah, the DMCA dispute shares the information with both sides. Bingo. But the attacker could put in fake information, which is like, what the hell, man? Thor says it's punishable as fraud. And I know from my recent experiences, if they file using false information, they can also be convicted of perjury. In some states, they can also be held accountable for other charges as well. After being convicted of perjury and or fraud, I imagine anyone found guilty would also have to reimburse the other party for financial damages, such as attorney fees and lost wages. 
it gets expensive quick, and both parties have to travel to federal district court. Just the travel time and expense alone is exuberant. You could send a kid to college for the amount of money it will take you to get out of the mess you start for yourself. So I highly encourage everyone to think twice if they are thinking about using this tactic on another streamer. I have always felt everyone should make their own educated decisions, and I am in no way asking you to shame or harm the above individuals in any way. But I would personally encourage anyone in my community to avoid them at all costs, and anyone else who thinks this practice is acceptable for that matter. Associated with repeated patterns of malicious behavior just doesn't look good for you or your channel. Fortunately for me, I'm set up to handle and address such types of abuse. And like Thor says, Are you safe from such things? No, but we also have a company in the way. Like if somebody DMCA'd me, I'd be like, all right, let's fight. <laughs> We've done it before. We actually, did you know we actually got a fake DMCA? Looks like it happens to the best of us, bud. And I won't go down without a fight either. Let me show you why it's good to stick up for yourself. So to wrap this up, after everything that's been said and everything that's been done, I can't tell you who it's from. I can't tell you what it's about or the details inside. But I can show you that at the very bottom of the email that we received, there is this clause here. Looks like somebody wants to settle with me out of court. Strange thing to do if they weren't guilty. See you on Sunday.